Did you know? You have everything you ever need already here inside you now. And so, with this uplifting thought in mind, you just might like to close your eyes and find in comfort where you are right now. Simply breathe. In for the count of three, and out for the count of five. A rhythm which you'll come to know to be your very own, to lead you in through easy spaces, gentle frames of mind, and slowing down the pace of things so pleasantly to pause take stock step right out from the spotlight and simply step away because just coming to rest even for this little while is natural and necessary, deeply beneficial to your being as a whole, and breathing just like this and nothing more, in for the count of three and out for the count of five. Something which you're sure to feel does bring you in through softer modes of being, both in body and in mind, in every sense, as once you did so easily, once upon a time, one, two, Three, four magic words, true magic spell, first heard in childhood, just before a story, still retains, clear signal to your inmost being, mover of your breathing that this special time has come again. To drift off with no thoughts of any final destination. To find again this easy route through deepest relaxation. To focus on this newer thing. Ancient, truly nourishing. To body, mind, and soul, without distraction, past or future, present moment, perfect center, here and now, that's all. For when we rest in fullest sense, our automatic, inbuilt healing processes commence. The reason why at night we go to sleep, the reason why we feel the need to enter into pleasant daydreams easily, Cleanly disconnecting from all inconsequential outside calls. Complete dissociation from our daily social roles and all the world's impossible, ridiculous demands. So leaving here 
your outside face behind your public face. So useful for our daily social interactions, but of no importance here. Shutting out annoyances, turning down the glare, to enter deeper kinds of relaxation where you're feeling warmly comfortable, at ease, at rest, at last, unpressed by any sense of stress or restless expectation here inside, because there's no one here to tell you that your dreams are somehow wrong or inappropriate. How could they know? They couldn't. So, all you need is nothing more than being here in simple presence, as you are, knowing that you are alive and deeply interested, focused, still and clear, continuing your easy breathing, in by three and out by five, Remembering the endless comfort always waiting here and knowing everything you need, you have already here within you now. As all your muscles physical, relax. Slipping in through seamless dreams of open possibilities, loosening all certainties, so letting go of everything, your nose, your ears, your cheeks, your lips, your chin, now drift away can disappear as if you have no head of which to speak, so vocal cords, both left and right, all hush their words, go quiet now, with nothing left to say, they simply go to sleep. Smoothing over all those other outer thoughts and vices, faithfully, delightfully, no earthly need to hold on tightly any more, as every stressful tension here dissolves itself away. A deeper breath brings all these peaceful feelings in with you toward your very center, flowing out from inner warmth, invites you further inside for the reason why you're here today, the reason why you're listening to these words, because you and I know very well, in different states, at different times, you have felt very differently, which means, of course, you can, again, 
feel very differently. You know this. You have memories. Undisputed memories from better times before all this had grown to be. Waking in the mornings, happy and delighted just to breathe, to be alive, eager and excited by the fascinating prospect and the challenges of life, inspired by growing vigor, intrigue, curiosity, once upon a time, prior to the advent of this latter run of days, and yet, things have changed in so many ways since then, since nothing in experience can ever stay the same, nothing's stuck eternally, just couldn't be. Existence moving fluidly, her current quite unstoppable, her pulse of life forever irresistible, evolving through successive forms continually. And yet, there's something that as humans, yes, we all are prone to do, and that's forgetting to remember that there is a part of us which doesn't change. As anyone can sense, there must be something special to our nature which remains the same throughout our varied lives, through all our many stages, all our many days, the vital factor, as it were, the central strand that leads out from your inmost core, so therefore also leads unerringly inside again towards the inner you, the deeper you, the heart of every matter, yes, this inner thread which runs right through your every center, source of all those ever-changing feelings, moods, and attitudes your ever-changing forms, unshakable, unbreakable, completely incorruptible. This part of you, you always are, no matter how the feeling goes, from week to week, from day to day, or even hour to hour, your font of life, your fundamental presence, yes, your underlying essence, yes, this elemental spark which never fades away, true inner light which makes you one with everything remains, survives, persists, and so, perhaps, maybe, intrigued and growing somewhat interested in this ancient story, newly made, of which you're just about to hear. I'm just about to tell. 
a tale of unforeseen renewal when all was thought quite lost until it wasn't once again. And this story draws its meaning, all its power from the deepest place inside yourself, deeper than you've ever felt, you've ever been before. Going twice as deeply in this trance, each and every instance that you hear me say again, these magic words, this magic spell, once upon a time, yes, twice as deeply, each and every time you hear me say them so, forgoing all the world completely as you easily once did, all those many moons ago, once upon a time, as once you were, so soon you are, to be again, just like before, in deepest comfort now, you are, already ready, here and now, to hear enchanted spells, entrancing rhyme, this story, which is made from you, can now begin with once upon a time, there were three little dragons, triplets, with a birthday, all the same. Their general experience when small was fairly similar, but not at all when adult dragons breathing fiery flame, which dragons, by tradition, tend to do familiar to anyone who heard a dragon's tale, which I do assume, expect, presume, also includes you. Now, from these three wee dragons, two of three grew up to be the kind of dragons we all know, living in Antarctica, friends with all the penguins there, clearing all their roads of ice and snow, but not our little flameless friend, oh no, for melting snow was not within his power, unable to breathe flame like both his brothers, he became a wanderer, a legendary storyteller, telling lots of stories just like this one here, which, would you believe, begins with that well-known magic spell. Once upon a time, there lived a little caterpillar, a many-legged lettuce lover crawling on the ground, just where luscious lettuce lives, and so can easily be found. A caterpillar's favorite thing of all, at least that was the case for our little crawling friend so many moons ago, when she was very small, once upon a time. But 
as she grew, it seemed to her that letters didn't do for her what once it did before. And finding perfect letters turned increasingly more difficult, less and less appealing, more and more a chore. There was, she sensed, a deeper need, a growing, gnawing hunger deep inside that cried and cried and cried, a longing to be ultimately, permanently satisfied. Escape for once her restlessness, her anxiousness, forever and for all remaining time, to truly know for certain Life is not just painful, lonely struggle, looking for elusive letters, on and on and on. And so, quite understandably, she felt frustrated, disappointed, quite defeated, unfulfilled, indeed. This weary, sometimes teary little caterpillar felt as if she'd very nearly reached her end, her final days. Her zest and youthful energies, just distant dreams, mere memories. The light, it seemed, was definitely dimming in her life. She desperately wanted change as well as rest, something fresh and interesting at the very least, because just crawling along the ground like this was, well, just crawling along, so getting nowhere fast, stuck in the shade, beneath all things, just longing for an upturn that would last. And all her longing brought her to the gate of Lettuce Farm. She thought she must be dreaming, but since this dream is truly real. She crawls inside to find her perfect letters, brightly green and fresh and crisp and new, crawls right into the heart of it to munch upon the sweetest inner part of it. But suddenly, because this is a farm, her lettuce is picked. She grips her leaf with all her teeth as tightly as she can, as all her world turns upside down, transported somewhere dizzily, thrown around continually inside this chilly van for what seems like hours in the dark. Then washed inside a metal sink, the lettuce chopped, then rearranged, and placed upon a brightly shining dinner plate. The piece on which she clings, now pierced by four fork prongs, raised high into the air, and then she saw the beast that was just about to eat her, pause, and say, how very, very interesting. I've never seen so many legs on such a little thing before. I thought 
I had the most till I saw you. I've got eight, but clearly you've got more. Yes, I've got thirty-two, replied our little caterpillar. Well, that's four times more than I do, said the octopus, who liked a bit of salad for his lunch, and happily was strictly vegetarian, and so our many-legged friend relaxed, as once she had so very long ago, once upon a time. The octopus then told her very many things about the world she never, ever knew. And by and by, he gained her trust and confidence, and everything he said she took as true. And then she spoke to him about her world, her upset and frustration that finding perfect lettuce now had grown to be so very troublesome. She sometimes felt she'd had her fill of drudgery, anxiety, of crawling all around, of being stuck beneath all things, being married to the ground. Her spring and summer days, she felt, were clearly over. Her autumn days were crawling to a close. I just don't seem to have it in myself to lift myself and change, she bitterly complained. So all I ever think about is lettuce, and it truly doesn't do for me what once it did before. Every day seems colder. The days are getting shorter. I'm feeling so much older, and I don't know what to do. But then the octopus said something new. He said, Although it may seem mad to you, you're not near your end of day. You're merely, nearly at the end of one distinctive stage, which clearly means that very soon you will be at the very beginning of something truly new and utterly transforming. After having said his piece, he picked her from his plate, placed her gently on the ground beneath the tallest tree, and said, Continuing to crawl along the ground, devoting your life to finding the perfect lettuce, isn't going to get you anywhere. Trust me. It's time to go upwards, pointing to the topmost branch of the tree with an encouraging tentacle. Up a tree? The little caterpillar asks, doubtfully, never having heard of such a thing. Might there be perhaps some lovely lettuce to be found up there? She asks, hopefully. Mm, no, replies the octopus. There are no letters of any description up there to be found at all. But what you are going to find will solve all your problems, will answer all your questions, and will transform your current misery and lead you to your destiny. 
I promise you, you have all you need inside you now already. Being what you truly are, it's intimately part of you. And what is just about to happen, all because of this, is so much better than lettuce. Better than lettuce? She asks, with even more doubt in her voice than before, wondering what on earth the octopus could possibly mean. I assure you, said the octopus, much, much better than lettuce. The light in your life is just about to get a good deal brighter. And so, with this solid reassurance, placing all her trust in what her newfound friend, the octopus, has said, begins her upwards climb. Up, up, up the tree searching for that promised brighter light. Spurred on by deepest need, gives everything she has and keeps on crawling upwards and soon becomes relieved to find the ground below grows ever far behind which gives her rising hope to carry on going upwards. Convinced of what the octopus has said. And once she passes yet another branch, she pauses. Just because here she finds a troubled little mouse sitting with his back towards the trunk. A rather anxious look upon his face, gripping his tail tightly in his two front paws and studying it intently. Oh, do you know, I think I'm gradually turning into a worm, said the mouse, pointing to his tail. Oh, I really don't think so, said the caterpillar. That's not a worm you're holding on to. That's your own tail. It's naturally part of what you really truly are, and absolutely nothing for concern. The little mouse was surprised and delighted to hear this. Oh, really? I see. Why, thank you, he replied, forgetting all about his tail and scampering off to do proper mousy things. And still, our little caterpillar keeps on going, keeps on crawling upward just like you can imagine, being in her place, determined little caterpillar, just because your stories are so very similar, for once upon a time, you were just the same, in ways perhaps forgotten now, but all of that is by the by, and absolutely nothing for concern. And so, you do continue on your upward journey, and once you've passed another branch, you meet a very upset, worried 
snail, all flustered and confused, and ask him what has brought him to this awful, stressful state. The snail explained, Well, you see, I've gone and lost my house, again, forgotten where I live. I've been looking for my house everywhere, in vain. I just can't seem to find it anywhere. Ah, said the caterpillar to the snail, your house is part of you. It's something you don't need to find, something that you simply just can't lose, because it's always with you everywhere you are, and everywhere you choose to go, so look, she said, pointing at it. Ah, oh, yes, said the snail, swiveling his head to see behind him, remembering his shell, and realizing all she said was true. You are so very kind. Thank you for reminding me. I can be so very forgetful sometimes. Now, where did I put my house keys? And off he slid to look for them. Whilst our little caterpillar keeps on crawling upwards, looking for that promised brighter light, yet growing somewhat anxious just because she feels the light is not in fact increasing, no, for all is getting darker as the early winter sun begins to sink towards the earth. But still, her trust in what the octopus has said persists, and so continues her ascent, crawling up, up, up the tree, still looking for her promised brighter light passing branch after branch after branch, until she reaches here the furthest, highest place her many little legs have energy to carry her, and here she stops, for something deep inside her tells her so, the time is now, to do something she's never done before, yet, something deep inside her knows just how, for here she feels a tiny tickle, something stirs at her far end, she curls herself to see what may be here, and finds a little bit of silken thread magically appear, and deep unconscious knowledge guides her faultlessly, pulling on this silken thread of caterpillar stuff, begins to wind this carefully, full focus and attention, closely wrapping all around her form, her newest, latest, final outer dress. She spins in silken elegance, with patient, loving diligence, a pattern for the ages perfect spiral, pure finesse, 
a mesmerizing blend of natural artistry, precise, organic engineering, all the way until she is enclosed, complete, encapsulated perfectly, and so fulfills her final task, so naturally fitting and so comfortable. So, nothing more to ask of her but wait upon her inner light to do this wondrous thing, whilst she can sleep and deeply rest at last. And so, for fully nineteen winter days and nineteen winter nights she rests in Mother Nature's close embrace her caterpillar form and all her former feelings now dissolve away. She enters into formlessness, no face, no name, no notion of her former self, as all resolves through purest state of being, returns her to her deeper self becomes her source of life. And truly she is just like you, is just like me, like every other living thing that ever was, could ever be, returning to your origin the unconstructed you, to reconstruct in your form a better, more appealing, more fulfilling way to be, from something true you cannot lose, have always had, and always are, so very deep within you. Yes, unshakable, unbreakable, completely incorruptible, and resting, waiting, listening here in deepest, fullest peace. This inner you this deeper you, this quiet, unself-conscious you, reserved and rarely noticed, yet true power behind your throne, effortlessly regulating all your inside processes, in present, perfect, Time. The one who beats your heart, who grows your hair, your skin and nails, the healer of your flesh and bone, who works away on your behalf, in silence, unselfconsciously, who keeps you breathing properly when you are fast asleep. The one you always knew you were, before you knew your name, when happiness and being you, recently two different things, but then the very same, when nothing was important when everything was simple, when no one was to blame. The writer of your story and the teller of your tale, your actor 
and your theater and your audios. Supreme director, inner muse, decider of reality, closest friend and ally, yes, original identity. The universal architect of all you know to be the maker of the structure and the meaning of your world. The one who makes the rules concerning what you know as good and true and sensible. Guardian of your ethics and your code. Creator and updater of the maps you use to navigate this ever-changing world. The unmoved mover of your full, complete experience. All you are and ever were to be. The dreamer of your many dreams when you are deep in slumber. The dreamer of your waking world in which you dream yourself to be. Your ever-present witness never seen. Who shapes your tastes and attitudes Attracts you to those things you like. Repels you from those things which are unwanted. The master of your switches. Who turns your every habit. Either on or off. Who makes and breaks those habits. Just like that. The keeper of your inner clocks. The stretcher and contractor of experience. Holder of your secret keys and all your hidden locks. This deeper you. The one from whom you rise each day, the one who wakes, designs and makes the contents of your days, source of all your thoughts, your drive, your energies, the one who knows this dance of life has many different acts and movements, each of which is given its allotted time to run, which then must end for there to be this newer way of being you. This part of you which does not change, yet no exactly when things within this world have changed, so also knows precisely when things are needing change within. This part of you which knows, this part of you which always is aware which never sleeps, more true to you than any other thing within this world could be. The one who is your everything, whose presence is eternal, who was not born, who does not die, the everlasting universal, 
Ellie Mantle. You can hear me oh so clearly now, and I thank you for your kind and clear attention to my voice. Resting, waiting, listening here in deepest, fullest peace. Such is your inmost nature, unperturbed and unaffected by the ever-changing world which spins in frantic animation all around, serene, composed, and powerful in ways beyond our dreams. And crucially, this part of you excels in automatic redesign of problematic thoughts and feelings all throughout the mind, on every level, easily, making necessary readjustments, naturally fitting and appropriate. Everything inside yourself, painstakingly reviewed, you can, you have the time to do this very thoroughly. To find, perhaps, all sorts of former, darker ways of seeing you, which need no longer be like this. Sensing what needs altered, readjusted, rearranged, deconstructing all upsetting feelings now. Out of place and undesired, reconstructing perfectly with nothing new being added or required. Those obstinate, persistent, self-defeating frames of mind unwanted and unhelpful habits, all of which are now revealed as nothing other than self-harm. Yes, you know exactly which, precisely where they are, to bring them here. Examine these in detail, finding all destructive things these bring you to. And so, resolution searches out their roots, their very reasons for existence, the way they came to be, and so can see the way so easily to free yourself from these, transforming all through better, more constructive moods and attitudes, refreshing all you know as being possible conceivable, achievable, all easily within your power to do, and in doing only this, to notice that your symbol for yourself grows ever more appealing and more comfortable to be. Casting off the weights which kept you in the shade, 
and married to the ground, allowing you to rise into the light, freed from every shadow of the past, yes, one and all, cutting off their influence at last. Transformation, as it does, and always, ever, will. And no self-doubt about this, none at all, for after all, are these not now mere outer shells of former ways of being you, of seeing you, symbolic of a time that has now passed, out of time, outgrown and out of place, so easily dispensable, no longer even entertained by any urge at all, no longer having relevance, you can step from these dark, restrictive frames of mind forever, now, with joy, with ease, good feelings of complete relief and enter now this deepest peace in which we rest deeper than we've ever known dissolving all our fears for hours for days for months, it seems like years of inner healing peacefulness. And during this unconscious metamorphosis occurs within your chrysalis, in nature's failsafe way, miraculous transition into newly fashioned being, and all from what you always had already here within you, your former being, being reconstructed now by artful readjustment of original ingredients, for not a thing is lost or wasted here. Just like a house, dismantled piece by piece, so carefully conserving all can be rebuilt from bottom up. Unshakable foundations, worthy walls, on top the roof, unbreakable, now weatherproof, and all secured from what you had already stored away in different form inside you all along just waiting for some timely transformation, just like this. And so this is, because a new day now has come, as spring's first light awakens living consciousness, new life stirs as if 
from centuries asleep within your waiting chrysalis. This outer symbol of your past, caressed by warming sunlight, cracks and splits, begins to open faithfully, begins to fall away. Those former frames of mind releasing you in full emerging from your former state, shedding now that empty shell, reborn anew again. You are victorious. And standing tall upon this highest branch to stretch your open wings until so beautifully unfurled, reaching out, you touch the sky, embrace the world in wonderment that such a thing has truly come to be, a surge of life so glorious, the brightest light you'd ever dreamt, you'd ever hoped to see, has now arrived, illuminating everything within you, all throughout you, knowing that eternity is all your very own. The sun above, the earth below, as seen through these new eyes, all senses sharp, responsive, vital now, revivified. You can arise into this brighter light, full confidence in everything you are and choose to do and be. You are revitalized, re-engineered, re-energized, your very being reimagined rightly once again. And being one and single-minded, inner being unified, the world itself has been remade. And so, your joy in simple being, simply being alive, you take yourself so easily so pleasantly, so lightly, forgiving all, for everyone, for everything is easy here, a loving heart turned always outwards openly to all, melting every broken shard of crystallized emotion, returning mind to polished mirror surface, single whole. So see yourself reflected here in finely sharp, exquisite detail now in any type of situation, calm, serene, composed, all appetites in full control, so clearly focused, fascinating.
affected by the living world you see around you, so self-confidently patient and relaxed in everything you are and choose to do, you can see your way through. It's all quite obvious from here. And noticing with growing joy that empty, gnawing feeling deep inside that cried and cried and cried in desperate need of sustenance of brighter light has found its change, has been transformed, is now fulfilled and satisfied. Knowing now things have changed quite clearly for the better, yes, unquestionably so. And so, realizing this as living change, that change is what it is to be alive, your living revolution through all forms. For what we saw as dying forms no more than just the losing of another outer shell, symbolic of our former life, the fullest change of all, completion of one further cycle, certain still to feel life stir again, as all our final fears now fade away. And so, not yet, but in a minute, I shall count to nine, and on hearing that successful number, you will return to normal waking consciousness, knowing that you are utterly transformed. But just before you do, go deeply now inside yourself, deeper than you've ever sensed, you've ever been before, beneath your face, beyond your name, the center of your inner self, this inmost place your inner core, sensing now a clear and calm awareness of this simple sense of blissfulness, the purest state of being in this present perfect moment only, always full replete, content, complete, just natural good feeling flowing everywhere, flooding all throughout your every being now, for sensing this is being this, perfection in simplicity, duality dissolves, becomes unicity, unself-conscious feeling, being, all we know we are, the space within the center of all things. Deeply, deeply sensing this, 
for the next 60 seconds of clock time, whilst I shall be quiet. 60 seconds, stretching out in this magical state for all the time that you need, as everything inside you fully heals. Just feel this now. And so now, I can begin the count. One, coming up on rising waves of gladness and release. Two, coming up feeling truly newly made. Three, coming up knowing that you are brightly, freshly new. Four, coming up with feelings of profound success. Five, coming up with overwhelming sensations of successful transformation. Six, coming up with feelings of contentment and fulfillment. Seven, rising awareness of new abundant energies flowing all throughout you now. Getting ready to open up your eyes and the successfully magical number nine.